Hello and welcome to the Rangers Rabble Academy Review. Tonight I've got two special guests for Hart and Hand, James and Ross. How's it going, guys? Very well, thank you, mate. How are you? Thanks for having us on. All good, guys. All good. It's good to talk about the academy again. I know we were on recently, but you can never talk enough about the about the quality of players coming through the academy, in my opinion. So let's just crack on. We've got a week and a well, it was mainly supposed to be about the loan review, but obviously the news that Leon King signed his new deal. I think it's only fair that we kind of jump straight into that. It's obviously big news. I mean, anybody that watches the academy and obviously Leon were out a contract at the end of the season for the club to get it done so quickly. How important was it to get that done, Ross? I think massive for a couple of things, not just for Leon personally, because I think everyone's kind of on the same page that he absolutely does deserve a new deal. I think anyone who's watched Leon consistently, James, I know you'll agree with me on this from the games that we've covered for the B team. It's a different defence in that B team when Leon's in it. You can tell that he is just a cut above. And I think to have that kind of talent here at, at Rangers in the long term is something that's, that's absolutely massive for us. But as I said, it's not just for him. If you think as well about the kind of demonstration that shows about the pathway. Now, we've had a lot of talk about the academy over the past 24 hours because of Nathan Patterson moving on to Everton. But to show not just to Leon, but to other players in the academy, look, there is a clear pathway now. This is a development plan that you can follow as well. It's horses for courses in terms of development plans, but there is a clear pathway there. Someone that you can point to and say, look, if you work hard and reach this kind of level, get this kind of reward, and that reward is to be a full-time member of the first team squad, which let's face it, that's what all the boys want. Not all of them will get there. I think we're all quite realistic on that. That's just the nature of academy football, but you have that carrot at the end of it now. So I think that's absolutely massive. And I think for the entirety of the academy, everyone deserves a massive pat on the back for the past 24 hours, because as I said, not just for Leon, but for Nathan as well, it's been a massive day for them. Do you think it's a pat in the back as well for Leon, given that over the last kind of 18 months that he has developed into an even better player, James? Do you think this is like the next step in his development moving into the first team? I think so. I think that's the natural next step for him. Um, you know, I think whenever Ross and I have watched some of the games, and I know you'll be the same, Willie, in terms of this, um, any of the B team games that we've watched, you notice the defence feels a lot more assured when he's there because he, he's developed well in a physical sense and he's maybe not quite as old as some of the other guys, funnily enough, in that team. But he is he has developed very well physically and I think that really helps him in terms of making that step up. And I don't think you'll find that uh, aspect of it much of a challenge when he's training with a first team a lot more now because we're now talking about a first team squad player. Um, you know, that's the thing that I, I took away from what Ross Wilson was saying regarding the, uh, the new contract today. You know, I whether we see as much of him uh, lining up for David McCallum's side or not going forward, we'll see. I doubt it, uh, because I think we'll look at him more in that first-team squad manner. Um, but it's it's good to see that there is just, you know, but it's not it's not throwing him in. It's a natural kind of sort of bit by bit by bit by bit, getting him up to that point. And he's talented enough to make first-team appearances for us. He's, he's done that already. Um, and I think getting that deal sorted out now uh, is really, really good for us in the long term. Yeah. I think that point James made there about being yeah. a natural progression is really important because look, there's different ways in which young players will come into football teams at various stages and occasions. So one that I always like to kind of point to is Marcus Rashford. The way he came into that Man United team was not maybe as natural as, as this will be for Leon King because he's very much kind of just thrown into it at a certain point. It doesn't really feel that way with Leon. James is spot on what he said. This feels like the natural end point to years of kind of hard work and progression there. And that that's excellent to see. And as I kind of hark back to what I said earlier on, it shows other players in the academy that you do have this end point you can reach in time. And if you put the hard craft in, you'll get that kind of personal reward at the end of it. So, yeah, absolutely massive. Yeah, and I think one of the big things that people need to remember here is that Leon's still only 17. <laughs> I know Leon has been like spoken about now. It sort of feels like forever, to be honest. You know, I first seen Leon, I think, when he was like 14, 15. And he just stood out for everybody else, mainly due to the fact he was like a foot taller than everybody else in the group at that point. But oh, he, just had, I, like, he just had that something special, didn't he? And I think the thing with Leon right now that's that's you know a fair point that you two guys make, but he's in the team. There's a certain kind of different feeling about it, and I think that just comes from maybe the the experience of being in the first team a couple of times. The fact he's trained with the first team for a decent period of time. And I think it's always been kind of thought kind of privately amongst a lot of people that it was only a matter of time before this was going to happen. But 
until the new contract was signed, there is always a slight concern, I suppose, that maybe you think that maybe an English club could sneak in the door and take him. So I'm exceedingly happy, I suppose you could say, that he signed his new deal and that he's going to be with us for at least another two years. And hopefully by that point, he's a regular in the first team. And we're talking about another you know, quality player, maybe in two years' time, that's coming at Leon's back, that's going to come into the first team. Because that's what we're all here to talk about, isn't it? It's about the development of players from the 18s into the reserves of the B team and then into the first team. That's really what we all want to see. That's what we're all here for tonight, is to talk about, you know, developing players for the first team, Ross. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what you said there about kind of securing Leon for the future, for the purpose of the club is massive because... I mean, I mean, let's be honest, we've seen it with Nathan Parks in the past 24 hours. It is the model now where we need to be bringing through players through the academy system and then selling them on at a massive profit. That is kind of where we are. But at the same time, we do want to see these boys have at least some of their best years at, at Rangers because we're fans and we're selfish that way. But the business <laughs> model is, yeah, well, we are. We are the winners. I don't have any you know, issue or hypocr- hypocrisy saying that because we do want to see these boys play at Rangers. We do want to see them play their best football at Rangers, but at the same time, we need to be realistic about where we are in the world, what our club model is. So now that we have Leon secured for the kind of long-term future and we can hopefully see him in the belt, that, let's be honest, I think we all think he's going to develop into a top defender. And if we can play some of his good football at Rangers and then maybe a club down south will come in, come in for him and he'll get that big move, then that, I think, works for all parties and that's incredibly fair. So if he can set the club up in the way that we all think he will by developing and then leaving for a massive fee, then I think everyone's a winner in that situation. Yeah. I think we'll stop talking about Leon before he gets too much of a bigger head. In case you're watching <laughs> Leon, we're going to stop now, mate. All right, you've probably had enough. Um, okay, firing up a wee question there. Tony Weston is a really good player as well. So should he join the first team too? James, I'll come to you on this one, mate. What's your opinion of Tony so far this season? And is he ready for that step up? He hugely impresses in, in that team uh, in a variety of different positions, whether he plays as the as the main striker or whether more often you know, he finds himself further out wide. He's one of the quickest guys I think I've ever seen play in a Rangers shirt. Uh, he's, he's incredible in terms of his speed. Um, and he always he has he has that natural ability to find himself in the right place in the box to finish off, mm-hmm. and you always feel very confident when the ball falls to him in the area that he's going to do that. Um, I think he's when you know, and, and it may well be a conversation that we have kind of further along on on this, Willie. But uh, in terms of guys who are in the B team right now who could make that step up into the first team, he's naturally going to be one of the players that will be talked about more because the stats in terms of goals oh. for him this season are. Uh, un- unbelievable um, considering we're still only just over halfway through the season in, in the Lone Lone League um, whether he need- needs to just slightly bulk up a bit more or whether he doesn't need to be that type of player and maybe that's maybe that comment there is just a, a sign of there's still a bit of kind of British thinking there rather than you know if he was in mainland Europe for example does he maybe get more of a chance um, you know if, if he's continuing to do, do well and be that impressive uh, he'd be one of the guys I'd have no problem with coming into the first team fold and you know training for a bit and seeing how he finds that environment because I think you need to have them there you know training with the first team boys for a bit rather than just throwing them straight into a game for instance so there's a kind of, sort of there's a step by step process on that but yeah I, I mean if he continues to progress then there's some player there for sure. I'm kind of smiling here, Willie, because I think you and I were talking last night. I pretty much said the exact same thing James did about maybe hopefully you want to fill out a wee bit more, but I, yeah. I don't know if that's a, you said a, a very Scottish British thing. It's a, a very kind of colloquial attitude to have. But I, I completely agree with everything James said there. Look, you can't not impress you, especially when you watch him. The versatility that this kid has, not just to play through the middle, which I think is arguably his, probably his best position, but he can play anywhere across a front three as well. That's kind of what you're after at Rangers. If you look at a player in the senior team like Fashion Sakala, who has that level of versatility, it's nothing but an asset for you. And I think what James said is absolutely correct. If we can have him in and about the first team in the future, maybe not immediately. Any caveat there, he is obviously still a young boy, but in the future, if we can get him in and around the first team and learn enough of these players, then he's only going to get better. And of all the players in the B team that we watch on a regular basis, he's one of the ones that I'm most excited about because I really think that this boy has a shot at making it. And it's funny because he said that he said to us that he felt he saw himself as a ten when he yeah. 
type of player that he was. And that kind of surprised me a bit because the goal record kind of suggests maybe something different. But I get it because he maybe he maybe is the kind of guy that likes to play off of a main striker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know likes to likes to get the benefit of that in a lot of respects, but he works really hard as well. So yeah. I think all that, and also the attitude. I think the attitude is bang on with them as well. And I think that's a really important part to consider when you're talking about a lot of these guys. No, and I think that's the one thing. Anybody that is lucky enough to even talk to some of the lads from time to time, you know, they all have like a desire to make it. And I know that speaking to some of them, they are realistic. They know that no everybody's going to make it at Rangers. You know, the percentages of that are really low as we've seen over the years but it's not just about making it at Rangers it's about having a career in football and somebody like Tony um, even at his age you can tell that you know even if it's not at Rangers Tony will go on to have a good career in football he's got a natural ability to score goals he has a very small backlift but some amount of power when he hits a ball it seems as though like it travels faster than the speed of light sometimes when he hits it he just seems to rock it by the goalkeeper Um. And I really like him. He's he's just got that something about him. Sometimes you can't kind of put your finger on exactly why you like a player. But like Tony's just got that something that you think he's got that little bit extra that could maybe just take him above some of the other players. And that's what first team managers are looking for, isn't it? It's that somebody with that something extra that's going to put him above maybe the other guys that's in that squad. Um, we'll have a look at some of the guys out on loan now. We'll obviously, we'll talk about Josh first, since it's been announced today that he's signed for Tranmere. Just kind of obviously going over to the loan system, which was kind of part of the chat we were going to do tonight. Josh obviously started off going to Dundee, which probably didn't work out as well as he would have hoped it did. He then went to Morton, which I think was a fairly successful loan. Um, and the second half of that season, he joined Harrogate, which... Yeah, again, I think most people felt that went pretty well. He then signed his new deal after coming back from Harrogate until 2024. And he's now went to Morecambe, where obviously between injury and kind of loss of form, it's kind of not happened. Now he's at Tranmere. So that's five loans now for Josh. He's now 20. What is the good and the bad side of loans, Ross? What do you think is... You know, the loan system in general is one of those things that kind of sparks debate. So what do you think of five loans for a 20-year-old by now? I think the loan system for a club like us has multiple different purposes and possibly for any club around the world. You can see it in two different lights. You can use it as a development tool. But for kids maybe younger than than Josh, that's more what I've been inclined to use it for, is you can go out there, try and learn your trade, develop in a different kind of setting under different coaches. And I think at the start, at least that's what every player tries to do in a loan. But I think the the longer it goes on and the longer it's not really happening, and like you mentioned there about Morecambe, they kind of changed their system. They played in a 3-5-2. He had injuries, like you said. There was possibly caveats there in different circumstances that meant it didn't work out. But the longer it goes on, it becomes less of a development tool and more of a kind of business strategy tool. We are possibly sending people out on loan. And this isn't just in terms of youth players. This is across the board, and especially first-team players. We are sending these boys out on loan with a view to maybe finding them a new club at the end of it. Because I think for any kind of player coming through at Rangers, five, five loans in the way that Josh has had, it's not possibly the best look. And I think we've seen it before with various players coming through where they've been out on loan. And you just kind of get the sense that it might not be happening. Like you never want to write a player off. But at the end of it, there is a duty from the club. I, I feel personally, and I think the club knows as well, that you do have a wee bit of aftercare for these boys and you do look out for them career-wise. So if you can give them a platform, even if it's not going to be at Rangers, to go and try and put themselves in a shop window and launch their career somewhere else. And that also has to be part of the thinking. So I think when it comes to a player like Josh, unless he goes and kind of really tears up at Tranmere and look, I really hope he does, because I think there's a, he's a really talented boy and there's a player there. Unless that happens, then you're possibly looking at, OK, can we use this move as a platform to maybe move him on to a different club? And look, for us as a club and as part of the kind of selling club model that I like to bang on about, that is just a different part of it again. It's not as it's not as big and it's not as sexy as a £60 million transfer down to Everton, but again, if you can bring this, these kind of players in and if it's not going to happen at Rangers and you move them onto somewhere else and recoup a bit of a fee, then, you know, every little help. So I think, as I say, unless he goes and really kind of tears up down there, that's possibly the kind of position we're moving into with Josh. Yeah. James, I'll come to you on Kai Kennedy. He's obviously another one that I think there's talk about going to Comarnock now. That seems to be one of the rumours today. 
he's obviously been at Inverness, Rafe Rovers and Dunfermline. So if he was to sign for Kamarnock on loan, that would be his fourth loan. Kai's still only 19. He's contracted to 2023. Is he in the same position as Josh that this next loan has to be a really good one for him? What's interesting is all those loans are at the same level. Yeah. Um, with Josh McPake, there's been a kind of gradual increase in terms of level going from like the Scottish Championship to the English Football League. Um, yeah. So there's going to be a bit of a step up there in terms of that. Um, with Kai, I think I think you are talking about him in the same breath as what you would do, Josh McPake, yeah. in terms of I think I think we need to see something from him now. We need to see a run of games where he's like the standout player, especially at that level. Um, you know, if if he's a player that can be the catalyst for Kilmarnock getting promoted back to the Premiership, for example, then that's something that we can look at and say, okay, there's there's a bit more there for us to kind of look at uh, with that. But I think you know that these are examples of loan moves on on the face of it making sense in terms of these guys getting first team. Um, action and you know working under that pressure of trying to kind of help a team you know push on up the league and whatnot but uh, it's it's not a one size fits all type situation it's very different for each individual player and at the end of the day this is what the coaches who work in the youth levels this is part of what their job is part of the job is to work out is this the right way to help develop this player or are they better sticking with us at the training centre, playing lower league games and getting a bit more exposure to what it is that happens potentially in terms of first team training as well. So there's loads of different avenues to go down in terms of that. But I get why these guys that are out on loan have been going out on loan. I can see the sense in it, but they haven't quite done that kicking on thing I think we want to see from them. And I think just on what James said there about kind of different different players having different development plans, that's a really key point because we've asked Dave McCallum about this because it's one of the most commonly asked questions to us, whether it be in comments under the pods or in, indeed on Twitter, is oh, what do you think next? Is it a loan or is it in the first team? And it's not really a kind of one size fits all approach. You've seen it with Patterson, you've seen it with, with Leon as well. We, you know, not needed to use the loan system to go out in there. They've just managed to progress naturally. We have other players that maybe will need to go out and loan and develop under a kind of new coach and then come back a kind of more rounded player. It is horses for courses. I have my own kind of view on the loan system where I think if possible, if, if we can keep players within Rangers learning under our own system and our own kind of coaching setup, then I think that could be beneficial for some players. But there are, of course, players that need to go out on loan and maybe just, in some cases, develop in a different way, wising up a bit. These are young boys we're talking about. Just maybe putting them in their comfort zone for a wee bit can bring the best out of people. Getting them a wee bit of fresh perspective can bring the best out of people. So I think kind of any player that we talk about, whether it's loans or whether they've stayed at Rangers, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. And that's always something I think that James and I especially are quite keen to stress on any of the pods that we do. I know you'll be the exact same, Willie, about... It's just about trying to find the right approach for the right player. And that's, as James said, one of the key aspects of our jobs. Yeah. Well, come on to Mr. Steady Eddie, as I used to call him, Lewis Mayo. He was always like a six or a seven every game, Lewis. He was never a four or a five or a eight or a nine. But he was always a six or a seven. He was always reliable. You know, he won his tackles. He won every header. He distributed the ball well. He's another one. He obviously went to Partick and then... You know, Fairman now he's back at Partick. Lewis seems to be doing pretty well. I suppose the problem with Lewis is he's 21, he's close to becoming 22. Is his fit just going to be the Scottish Championship and Rangers maybe do what they've done with like Zach Rodden and Jordan Houston, which is maybe sell them for a smaller fee? Rangers have you know, maybe a sell on fee now or a buyback clause. Do you think that's the next move for somebody like Lewis Mayoros? I, th- I think at the age he is, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And very much like we said previously with Kai, it's all kind of a similar level of loans as well. There, yeah. There's not exactly the, you know, the massive jump there. But by all accounts, like you said, he's doing quite well at Partick and, you know, best of luck to him. But I think at that age, you are now firmly in a position of this yeah. This is the point where we move we move you on, wish you all the best. But crucially, like you said, either adding a sell on, a buyback, or preferably really both. Yeah, I think I think that's just kind of that makes smart business sense as well. And like we said about the loan system, it's not just the development tool. At that age, for us, I don't really think we use it as, the, as a development tool. It's more of a kind of business strategy model that we use at that point. So, look, if we can sell maybe to Partick in the summer, wish him all the best, and then yeah. 
yeah. hopefully he goes on and develops and if we can get him back at a later stage and then, then so be it I think that would probably make the most sense at this point Well can I move on to James Maxwell he's in a slightly different position from the other players most of the rest of the guys that we're going to talk about or have spoken about are under contract to 2023 or 2024 James is out of contract in the summer he obviously had a really good loan spell at Queen of the South where I think a lot of people were impressed with James during that spell he moved to like his boyhood club in Air United, which I know his dad was delighted about, to be fair. Um, and I think maybe people at that point, because he'd obviously been part of the first team in one of the trips, I think maybe people thought that James would come back and maybe push to that next level. It kind of doesn't seem like that's been the case. Whether that's on the club's side, James's side, obviously that's open to debate with people when they look at it. And there's obviously been some interest already that there's some championship clubs in Scotland looking at him. There was a link with Leeds United probably moving to their under 23s and then going out and loan. When you get to 20 years old, James, and you're in the last kind of four or five months of your contract, like, what do you think your thought process is when you probably know that it's not going to be at Rangers? What do you think your next step is to go and play regularly in the Scottish Championship? Or do you move to England and maybe go out and loan when you sign for a club like Leeds United? I think the answer to that really depends on who's who's around that player, who's advising them, whether it be family or whether by that point a player has an agent or whatever, whatever they, they kind of do in terms of in terms of working out what the right thing to do is. Because different people ultimately will have different interests for them. You know, if they if they if they've got an agent then for if if we use James Maxwell as an example in terms of that. The idea of going to Leeds, the agent's going to be like, oh, yes, let's do that. Um, whereas if it's from a family point of view, dad might be like, ah, no, you stay at Air United, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it really is just down to the individual. And I think that, again, coming back to what Ross said about, you know, the responsibility of Rangers to then kind of have that discussion with the individual players and say, you know, this is potentially where we think your path is going to be. Um, I think that's. I think it's really good that we do that. I think that's what all top clubs that you know really focus on youth side of things, um, they will do that. So I think for James specifically, I, I I wouldn't surprise me if that contract was to run down and he then that then allows him to have the freedom to decide what it is that he's going to do next um, and how he wants to do. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't surprise me if. He's one of these players who has a couple of years, maybe in the championship, for example, really impresses, and then will get a move, whether it be into the top top league in Scotland or potentially one of the bigger leagues in England, uh, off the back of that. Because I think I think there is a real talent there. Uh, I think he's a really you know a proper attacking left back, which is very much the done thing now in terms of how the fullbacks you want to have them for a lot of teams. So I think he'll do just fine in terms of his career, but I think the next step will be away from Rangers in, that, in, in terms of that this summer. I mean, this is like a good point, actually, that one of the guys makes that he remembers watching Kai and some of the other players in the Alcast Cup. Obviously, the lads went on to be really successful in that tournament, beating some really good teams. Do you think that, in some ways, the success in that tournament maybe gave people, not false hope, but maybe false expectations that maybe we were going to get four or five guys out of that group making the first team, Ross? I think that's very natural. I'm not, I wouldn't have a go at anyone for that because, it, look, it was a really, really impressive tournament they had, wasn't it? I mean, I'm thinking back to now, it's, like, it's a great point, you, you know, you're thinking, well, we might have a real kind of golden generation, kind of class of 92 type thing going on here. And you, obviously you want to get excited about that type of thing. Listen, we even see it in the... In a lowland league as well, when you know when Allegri scores as well, he's another player that has a lot of hype about him. Or when Tony Wesson, like we spoke about, I think it's only natural that we're going to get excited there. But as we're always kind of quite keen to stress, there needs to remain that sense of perspective that not all these players are going to make it at Rangers. And if you have a good tournament, that's fantastic. But not having one good tournament alone is going to is going to get you that step up to the first team. There needs to be a consistent level of development, like we've seen with Leon King, and I think that's why I keep saying he's a perfect example of that. So it may, maybe it did give the kind of false impression to people, and I, I, as I say, I don't think on the face of it that that's a bad thing, because you want to have that kind of hope that we're going to have these four or five starlets coming through from the academy, and look, maybe one day we will, but there just needs to remain that kind of sense of perspective that not all of these boys are going to make it at Rangers, and you just try to pick out the gems, gems at will, and that's part of the process. 
Yeah. We'll move on to Ben Williamson. Um, Ben's kind of done it the way that I think some people thought was the right way. You know, he went to a draw if he was a part-time team in the championship. There maybe wasn't a huge amount of expectation with a broth that season. Most people maybe thought they would get relegated. Obviously, that didn't turn out to be the case, and Ben had a really good loan there. Off the back of that, he signs his new deal until 2023 and then joins Livingston, which for me, I thought was probably the right move, personally. That clearly hasn't worked out. He's now joined up with Rafe Rovers and he started his first game there, James. What is the right and wrongs of that? Was it maybe a move too early to the Premier League or was it a move that he had to try just to see if he could work at that level, if he could play at that level? I don't think there's anything wrong with giving that a go. Um, whether whether that be a decision from Ben himself or whether it be the club that saw actually this makes sense in terms of there's the interest there, let's let him have chance to see if he can break into that team because if he's you know because if you think about it off the back of a good spell at a broth if he goes to Livingston makes himself a first team regular in a team yeah. and helps them have another season where they end up playing above expectations then there's serious conversations to be had about him in terms of in terms of what he could potentially do for us uh going forward for a guy who's had that kind of impact at two clubs and is doing that next next bit so I, I don't blame anyone at all for that decision. Yeah, it doesn't work out, but that's all part of the process in terms of saying, okay, that's not quite work. But the good thing is it's it's been acted on. I said, right, okay, that's not working. So what we'll do is we'll just we'll just bring this back a wee bit. Let's see, let's see you have another bit of an impact at this level. Uh, and then we'll and then we'll have a look at this again. So no, it's perfectly fine. And it's an example of doing the loan system right. And not just sort of saying, right, put him out there for a year. Well, not don't you think about him, and we'll look at the stats at the end of it and see where we're at with that. It's clearly week in, week out, checking is this working? What are we thinking? What's the long term benefits of staying or potentially making that move? So, I think I think when you look at Ben and you look at the example in a kind of wider sense, um, it shows the strategy behind our loan moves when we do do them there is a thought process behind that and it's not just done for the sake of it. Yeah. I'll come on to a player that's not actually out in loan at the moment, but a player that's possibly followed the path that maybe a lot of people from the outside think we should be doing, which is Stephen Kelly. Stephen obviously went to Air United, had a really good spell there, um, was highly sought after that summer. I think there was talk about maybe three or four clubs in the top flight being interested in Stephen. Eventually he went to Ross County, where he did okay. I think, yet yeah, again, Ross County that season were possibly expected to get relegated, um, but they didn't in the end. They obviously had some famous victories over Celtic, and uh, Stephen obviously played his part in the Cup success at Parkhead, and now he has become part of the first team. Some people would argue that he's not played enough for the first team, which is probably me, um, but is that the sort of loans that you would expect championship Premier League and then Rangers, or do you think there's just so many different ways of doing that, Ross? Kelly, Kelly's an interesting one, and arguably for me the most interesting one we've discussed so far, because I'm not entirely sure I, I even know where I stand what is the next best thing for, for Stephen Kelly, because you're right, you're thinking, especially when we were watching them in pre-season as well, for the first team, albeit under a different management team, you looked really impressive, I think that was quite universally thought they looked quite well, and I think at that point we all thought, right, okay, brilliant, he'll be in and around first team squad getting, kind of getting regular minutes that's not happened at all so far it doesn't really look like it's going to happen under Geo anytime soon either and that's not said in a disparaging way it just you know it will take a, a kind of it's a new level of impression he has to make again Kelly's one that's possibly going out on loan might be the best thing for him at, at this stage but the thing is he's an incredibly talented footballer if he was going to go out on loan I'd still be looking to a higher level of club than Ross County but for a kind of loan for Stephen Kelly, I would be looking kind of top end of the Premiership for that kind of loan if it was to kind of pan out like that. I think a lot of it depends on what he wants to do personally. Does he want to stay at Rangers and try and impress uh, Giovanni by Bruntcourse and the new management team himself in the first team, or does he feel like he wants regular minutes at this age? Probably, if it was me, I'd be wanting regular minutes because you don't want you can you don't want his development to stall, and that's kind of what you run the risk of if he's not playing mm -hmm. regularly. So possibly a top end Premiership loan is something you maybe look for for him, but. 
as I said, like I think we've all seen the talent that he has, and I think he definitely could play well for the first team if he was here. So that's why even I feel a wee bit conflicted about where I stand on Kelly. Kind of James, I'm curious to see what you think about this. Yeah, because the the thing that's so interesting about Stephen Kelly is I, I think about the Cove Rangers game. Um, yes, we, we saw and when we saw that he was in the starting lineup, that was something you and I'd said about. Okay, you know, it's first thing we'll see him for a wee bit. Let's see. You know what a player who has had a bit more kind of first team exposure, you know, can bring to this side. And actually, there was times where we almost forgot that he was playing. And I think part of that is down to that lack of regular kind of competitive mm-hmm. action, competitive game time that he's maybe missed out on of late. So I and think that's what I mean. Sorry, James, that's what I mean about his development stalling as well. That's yeah. kind of what you're worried about at, at, at this stage because you're spot on what you said. So I think I think from what you've said about you know I think it's important that he gets a bit of you know six months worth of playing regularly, whatever that level is. To be honest, I don't think it needs to necessarily be Premiership. If it was like top top end Championship, for example, I think okay, you know that's that's fine because you would feel confident that he'll play week in week out, um, and. As well, just maybe trying to understand a bit more in terms of what is his position going to be, because he's maybe played a few times when we when we've seen him live. He's maybe played a bit deeper than what you initially perhaps expected, uh, but it's looked quite good in in terms of that. But is there maybe more of a chance for him to play there or play in a different position when he goes out on loan, as we would kind of hope for him to do? That helps us try and understand that a bit more in terms of what, what, how do you get the best out of a player like Stephen Kelly. He's not one worth giving up on just yet, not by a long stretch, but I think he does need that bit of that practice, maybe, in terms of just that first team, first team football again for him. Yeah. yeah, I think the problem with Stephen is he's obviously 22 this year. He's under contract until 2023. I know Stephen would probably love to stay at Rangers for the rest of his life because, you know, he's a massive Rangers fan. He's gone through the academy since he was a young boy. It was great to interview him on the pod and listen to him. And I just wonder, in the back of his mind now, is he thinking that if he does go out and loan again, that's potentially the end of his time at Rangers? So does he stay and try and fight and fight and fight for that place in the squad? So it's a conundrum, isn't it, for the player himself? Because like, what is the right thing to do? Does he listen to the manager? Does the manager tell him, I think you need to go and play, Stephen? And then if he does go out and loan and it doesn't work out, then how does he come back and break into the first team, Ross? I think that's the kind of fine line, isn't it, with that thing at this point? A hundred percent, and that's why I said this is very much dependent on what Stephen himself feels as though he yes. wants to do, which is why I'm not entirely sure what I think is the best course of action for him, because you're exactly exactly right. If he goes out and loan and it doesn't work out for him, then you know, you're know you potentially talking about the end of his Rangers career, which would be an incredible shame, and that's, again, the reason why, why I said if he is going to go out and loan, you maybe be looking at a kind of top end premiership team because I don't see how he could go to a championship team and play for even like a team like Kamarnock, who are a massive team in the championship, and then break into the Rangers first team if he's really looking to go and make that kind of impressive statement loan spell, if you want to call it that. Which so you know it's a really it's a really interesting one to see how he develops. As I said, I'm kind of worried that we're in the position now where we see his development stall and James is brilliant on to bring up that Cove Rangers game where it did really seem to pass him by at points. Now, don't get me wrong, the team didn't do themselves justice as a collective that night, but talking about Kelly individually, it did seem to pass him by. So you're worried at this point, if he does try and stay and fight for his place and it doesn't happen then, could his career end up in a worse place than it would be if he does go out on loan? Even if it doesn't happen, he'll probably find himself a good move. So... So it's a risky one. This is a, it's a massive, massive crossroads in the young man's career. So just whatever it is, he has to make the right decision for him. Another one, possibly, at the crossroads of his Rangers career. He was just about to bring him up before Fog Dog jumped in there. The goalkeeping situation. Um, obviously, since Robbie's been like 15, 16, people have spoke about Robbie being a future Rangers number one. I think at the time before he signed his pro deal, there was like talk about Man United, Man City, Arsenal, Chelsea all been interested. It was a big deal when Rangers got him on a contract. Since then, he's obviously had his loan spells at like Berwick Rangers. I think he won like every award there was to win at Berwick. He's obviously kind of moved out and loan a couple of times in the championship. He's done his loan spells at Livingston. He came in when we'd lost like our two first choice goalkeepers to COVID. They kept two clean sheets. 
what more can Robbie McCrory do, James, to kind of like make that first team jersey his own? Or do you think that maybe now at his age, I know goalkeepers are different, but at his age, does he have to look at like sort of leaving Rangers to become a first choice goalkeeper? What he could do to force his way into the team is to lock Alan McGregor and John McLaughlin in the <laughs> in the cupboard, basically. <laughs> um, but I I think with goalkeepers there is a slightly different conversation because the it's a different discipline in terms of that and I think you are afforded a bit more time to get yourself up to that point. I I am of the belief that Robbie McCrory will be the next long term first choice goalkeeper for Rangers. Um I think he has shown enough through all of his loan spells. Uh, I think he's shown enough anytime we've asked him to step up uh, in terms of doing doing the job for us, as we have seen this season. So I think he's someone who is right on the edge of that, and the only thing that's stopping him is the fact that we've got Alan McGregor as one of the best goalkeepers we've ever had, who's still performing really well at the age that he's at, but that's not going to last much longer. And I think if Robbie is patient and is able to you know, get a bit more involvement here and there in, in some games, you know, depending on you know, what, what the idea might be, then I think he will get his opportunity. If you remember Alan McGregor, when he had his loan spells, after that, there was a couple of years where he was in and about the first-team squad, but he wasn't yeah. really doing an awful lot in terms of playing a whole load of games. But then he got his chance in 2006, and he took that chance, and he never looked back from that point. So with goalkeepers, it is... Uh, a slightly different kind of viewpoint in terms of that. I think he's done his loan experience. I don't think another loan move is necessary for him now. I think it's just play the waiting game. It's not going to be too long, and then you will have your chance, and I firmly believe you'll take it when he's given that. Yeah. No, I think that's all very good points, and I think it will be interesting to see what decision they make with Robbie. I think, yeah, again, he's another one that's out of contract in 2023, so I would imagine if they're looking to keep Robbie and they see him as a long-term successor, then they're probably looking to tie him down to a new contract sooner rather than later. Right, we're going to kind of go a little bit kind of off, kind of cuff here a wee bit in terms of like the loans, because that was what we were here to talk about. Zeb Jacobs is now obviously part of the academy. Um, I'd also spoke to Ross yesterday slightly about what we were going to talk about on this pod. Do you think for... Rangers with Jeb Jacobs coming in and obviously Dave Voss coming into the first team that we might see some players going abroad in terms of loans to maybe a Belgium or a Holland or maybe even like a lower level Germany or something like that. James, do you think that's potentially something that we'll look at now because he's down in the building? I'd like to see that. Um, I don't necessarily think that just because that's the point we've made that that's the idea, yeah. but if that was something we would kind of look to do a bit more, I think that would be really, really good because I think for some players getting, you know, that discipline of playing a certain way, if that's the long-term thinking in terms of having Gio in uh, and we know what he wants to do and he's already kind of established that in terms of, in terms of the first team already. Uh, but to give the guys that experience, uh, I think is a perfectly, perfectly good idea. Um I would also like, I think, to see, you know, some of the maybe the younger age groups get 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 more experience of, you know, spending a week at a training camp in Amsterdam, for example, you know, to just get a bit more exposure to another way of thinking in terms of because I think that's something that whenever we talk about the team in European games, um, that's the thing that they always talk about is you know things that they take away in terms of what they're coming up against, a different type of football. Um, different ways of thinking about a specific position uh, and you can get that experience off the back of that and given who's there in, in the door now in terms of staff, I think that a few more doors open in that respect uh, and it would be a shame if we didn't take advantage of that, I think. Ross, I'll come to you next with a sort of slightly different question. What do you think somebody like Dave Voss thinks when he looks at Scotland and all the kind of hassle that there was to get a B team in the Lowland League, given the Ajax have got, like, their young team and how well they seem to develop players for the first team. Do you think he kind of looks at Scotland and thinks that 
why are Scotland not doing what happens in Holland and many other countries throughout Europe? <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse. That's yeah. a yeah. It's <laughs> it's something that it's kind of grinding my gears for a while now, and it's something that I'm kind of glad that as a club at least we're moving on to. And I think part of the reason why, as a country, we've not properly embraced it yet is just really kind of parochial attitudes and quite backwards thinking to academy and development football. I think it's a it's a very well known ambition of the Rangers Academy and indeed the Celtic Academy that we would like to be able to play in the actual Scottish Professional Football League, especially in the kind of leagues one and two. But there's arguments from fans saying it, it kind of cheapens their league, which, you know, in the face of it, I do understand. But on the other hand, I don't really care. I'm a Rangers fan. I want what's best for Rangers. And as I said earlier on, kind of negating the need for loans because you can play Rangers players in a Rangers system at a competitive level. That's a long-term goal. When you look at Ajax, they somewhat have that in terms of their young team. So he's coming from that kind of setup where they have had a history and it's what they're world renowned for of developing players throughout their throughout their history, throughout their ranks constantly and it's just that constant cycle and once you build that kind of reputation it's the type of club that players are attracted to and the top players in the country want to come to we have that allure anyway in Scotland as being the number one country that young players want to come to because we are the biggest club in the country but then if we can move that into an academy level and make that just a complete cycle we are at the very start of this and this is the kind of thing that I keep repeating And Nathan Patterson's a bit of a game changer in that respect. I think it shows people that we can have these academy products come through and really move into that kind of Ajax style model where we can bring the young players through, play them. Hopefully, you know, he's a wee bit different, but hopefully see some of their best football rangers and then sell them on. That's the ultimate goal. But yeah, I can't see that actually changing in Scotland anytime soon, if I'm being totally honest. But coming from that environment, it must be totally alien. And as I said, mad to him here. Yeah. James, I'll come to you on Dave Voss. Obviously, he's part of the first team in the main, but I'm sure he'll take a keen interest in what's going on at the academy as well. When he looks at like the loan system in Scotland and like, how they do it in Holland, what do you think his kind of thought process is when you know we send boys to League One and League Two, whereas obviously in Holland in the main, they do seem to keep their best players in the young team and then move them into the first team, whereas it's difficult in Scotland because you're going from the Lowland League to the Premier League. Well, this is part of the thing that I know that Ross and I have had a lot of conversations with people about this uh, in terms of this very much, this idea of, no, this is how you do it. This is, you know, you you have a young guy at this age, you send him on loan and, you know, if he's not ready, then you send him on loan again. And if he's still not ready, you send him on loan again. And if he's not ready, I give up on him, chuck him away. Um, it's so different in countries at Holland who know what they're doing when they think about developing players. Um, And there's a reason why the Ajax Academy brings through so many players each year. You look at different Dutch national teams throughout the years and so many of them will have had experience in the Ajax Academy at some point. It's just what happens there. And I think we would all love for Rangers to be the equivalent of that in terms of you know Scottish players playing for the national team, but oh, so many of them have come through our youth academy. You know, it would very much for so many fans, I think it would be a real, real topper that. Um it will take a long time for that to get to get to there. But what I hope is that you know you've got someone like Dave Voss whose main focus will be in the first team, obviously, but he would then also be able to have an influence and say why don't we do it this way in terms of at the training centre for the young guys? Why can't, why can't, for example, more guys who are in the B team be involved in first team training, for example? Because I'm sure that that's one of the many things that happens within the Ajax Academy. It's all very, it's all very much, you're all part of one team, then you're not separated as much. Um, loads and loads of things. And I hope that, that if he was to offer some advice and offer you know, his experience in terms of that, that the club would absolutely take everything on board and really and really look at that because, you know, there are there are some academies throughout world football that should absolutely be seen as a benchmark for every football club that wants to be successful in that in that respect. And Ajax is right up there. So, you know, if, if you refuse to take on that uh, advice, then you're just being stupid, I think. And like we know ourselves, don't we, James? That Dave Voss takes a keen interest in the academy. We've seen him at games, B team games, you will as well, Willie. Where 
it's, it's a really good opportunity for the young lads to prove themselves. But Zeb Je- Jacobs himself is a fascinating character. He has a really keen interest in EZ Alkma o- over in Holland, who he believes have almost kind of brought into a fine science, a kind of formulaic approach to youth development and potential. I think at one point they had almost 50% of their under 13 squad make it into the first team. That's unheard of. Not at that age, obviously. I'm joking. But that's absolutely unheard of in, in world football, just to get that kind of sheer numbers from that, that level into a first team. So he's learned a lot from over there, and that's something that I'm really interested to see how he kind of brings that into the sort of Ranger setup. because, as we've said, that's the dream. If we can get, we're talking now about getting one or two, maybe three, four of these boys in the B team into the Rangers first team. If we can get numbers even close to that, then we're on a winner and we're laughing because we have Europe's biggest market and market on our doorstep down south and the amount of money that's there to be made from that is just mouth yeah. All right, the last question for the two of you is um, what would you like to see change in terms of either youth development or the current loan system? What would you like to see implemented that could help say like a 17 or 18 year old kid who needs to play? Like, What would you like to see implemented whether well, that's at Rangers or anywhere else in Scotland? I'll come to you My first, James. Oh, oh, right, right. <laughs> Jumping in there, sorry. Uh, right. my, my biggest thing is maybe not a structural thing at Rangers, but an overall structural thing in Scottish football. And it's going to need to change attitudes, which is why I'm saying I'm not entirely hopeful, but, you know, I'm a dreamer. It's quite a quixotic idea, but if we can have Rangers B teams in the kind of formal pyramid structure, then I think that is a complete game changer for Rangers and Celtic. Let's face it, there's a reason why other teams don't want us to do that. It's because we will be able to have the best talent playing at that level. And then you are moving seriously into the kind of Ajax model territory, which I know we're all enthusiasts of here that we're talking about, because that is really the way forward for us. But if we can put that step in there and it's a step up again from a level of the Lowland League which has been a good first step on that path if we can get it in there and get these boys playing at that kind of level then it again just makes that jump from the B team to the first team just that wee bit smaller again and you have a real serious brilliant pathway of players to get in there so that's something that I'm quite hopeful for for the future as I say I maybe not think it will happen but I'm hopeful that it will happen James? Yeah, I think I think that would be something I'd love to see in terms of uh, a, a willingness for and not just the old firm. You know, if there's if there's other other clubs in the country as well that that feel like they could maybe have a have a reserve team or an academy team that would be part of the Scottish football structure, then I'd be all for that uh, because I think that you know the more opportunities you get for these younger guys to play in a professional setting, the better they're going to develop. I think that just benefits everyone. In terms of that and the only clubs that are going to stop that are the clubs that feel that they are going to miss out on that but you know you've got to you've got to look at it in a wider sense than just that but we're too stubborn in this country to let to let that kind of thing happen i think something we're all we're already seeing but i I really hope it continues and i hope it advances further as a real kind of individual you know look at what this person's pathway is going to be when they come into the academy um, you know, really sit down year on year, looking at it and saying, you know, you've you've really advanced a lot in this sense, in this sense, in this sense. We think you're better off staying here for now. Uh, continue to play, you know, get some B team games, play in the Lowland League, um, get that experience there, uh, and then a year on, say we actually think a loan move might be a good idea. Here's why. Here's the club we're thinking of sending you to. Here's the reason why. But doing that for every single guy from an even younger age. You know, it might, it, you know, it might be just now that that only that conversation only happens from a certain point. Do it from a bit younger, really, kind of take that on board. And if that's happening already, fantastic. Um, if they're if they're doing it, continue to progress in terms of that. I think I think that's the way forward for youth development. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with both points. I think they're very valid. And if there's people watching this pod that support other clubs in League One and League Two. This isn't about Rangers and Celtic trying to, you know, push their way into the league and, you know, trying to dominate or whatever. It's it's actually to help young players develop into first team players and potentially for Scotland. And that could be Dundee United, it could be Hibs, it could be Hearts, it could be Aberdeen. This this isn't a conversation for Rangers. I think there's too many people that are short sighted that don't see the long term vision for what could actually help Scottish football as a whole. When you see the excitement around Nathan Patterson, even uh, Calvin Ramsey, who's coming through at Aberdeen, why shouldn't you know we be able to develop these guys possibly that little bit earlier? Josh Doig as well. 
to me, I think we're missing steps along the road. And I think as a country, we could do a lot more to help these young kids. Basically, once you get past under 18 level now, there's nothing. You know, there's not a reserve league for these guys to go to. So if the club at 17 or 18 decide these kids aren't good enough, they're basically let go. And some of them might end up dropping out of football altogether, which for me is totally wrong. And it's something that needs to be looked at. And I really hope it is. Um, just want to thank Ross and James for coming on. Thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to come and talk to us. I really hope we can do it again. Um, so thanks to everybody for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed the chat. Thanks for all the comments. We tried to get as many of them on as we could, but there was quite a lot there at times with different kind of points. Um, I just say hopefully we'll do it again. And thanks very much, and we'll see you all again very, very soon.